Okay? So here, the important aim in statistics is to determine whether there is enough statistical evidence in favor of a certain hypothesis about a, a parameter. So the use of a statistics class is to make conclusions and, and test hypotheses. Also, class, we can apply statistics in questions like how can a division of justices avoid convicting a innocent person? Or, or how can one know if one error is worse than another? So something questions like that. So in making conclusions class, we can never be always sure, but we can quantify our measure of confidence in the, in the result. So now let's talk about hypothesis testing. So for the learning outcomes, number one, define the basic terms involved in hypothesis testing, formulate null and alternative hypothesis for applications involving a single population mean or proportion. Number three, correctly formulate a decision rule for testing a hypothesis. And lastly, apply the five-step test procedure for a test of hypothesis concerning a population mean when the sample size is large. When we say hypothesis, hypothesis is a statement claiming that something is true. So a hypothesis is a statement of fact or a concept that is presented for the sake of argument and then tested to see if it is valid or invalid. Also, hypothesis is all about the population parameters. We're talking about mean, median, mode, uh, variance, and standard deviation. Here, uh, hypothesis testing or significance testing refers to the following, number one making an assumption called hypothesis about a population parameter. So for example, class, sa research nyo, ngayon class, kung gagawa natin ng, ng assumption nyo, o tiyatawag natin hypothesis, for example, so doon sa sample na kukunin natin coming from population, para malaman pa natin kung totoo nga ba yung nire-represent no, ng ating population parameter, dito, kinukumpare natin yung nakalap nating data, which is uh, galing from sample, kung meron nga bang significant difference or wala doon sa population parameter at saka uh, sample is statistic. Dito, class, para malaman natin kung meron significant difference, gagamit tayo ng iba't iba test statistics. Katulad ng Z-test at saka T-test. T-test. Ika-calculate natin yung sample statistics. So doon, magkakaroon na tayo ng idea kung yung nagawa nating assumption ay, ay valid ba or invalid. Here are some examples of hypothesis. So number one, there is a significant relationship between the battery of a car and getting better gas mileage. Number two, the percentage of vegetarians who are in the weight loss program is not 45%. And last, the mean monthly allowance of the senior high school students in, in the Our Lady of Fatima University is at least 4,000 pesos. So those uh, statements class are subjected to statist statistical testing to determine whether it is true or false. So we have two types here of hypothesis. The number one is null hypothesis. It is denoted by HO or H sub zero. H sub zero or basa H na. It is a statement that claims that there is no statistical significance between two variables. Those two variables class is what we call the population mean and sample mean. No significant difference between those sa population mean and, and sample mean. Kumbaga ito yung original claim mo. Uh, nagbigay ka man ng data, nagbigay ka naman ng data about sa sample. Yung kinompare mo sa ginawa mong assumption doon sa, sa about doon sa population, lumalabas na no significant difference. So, na... Sa dilasa na, makikita natin sa problem. Okay, original claim to. So ngayon class, kung gusto natin i-test, if, uh, if we wish to test the given assumption or the assumption and also we are trying to reject. And now, if the null hypothesis is rejected, 
Then dito na papasok si alternative hypothesis. Okay? Kumbaga back up to si alternative hypothesis. And take note class na uh, si hy- si null hypothesis palagi ang ginagawan natin or dito tayo nung focus kay null hypothesis. Dito, no? Kapag naga, uh, naga-hypothesis testing na tayo. Si null hypothesis palagi yung tinitest natin. Kung accepted nga ba or rejected. So, kung accepted si null, so siya na yung tatanggapin natin at gagawa natin ng conclusion. Kapag rejected naman si null, sa ating hypothesis testing, dito meron tayong backup na tinatawag. Ito yung tinatawag nating alternative hypothesis. Okay? It is denoted by H sub A. It is the inverse of the null hypothesis and it is the statement that you are trying to prove. Kung may original claim, then may alternate claim tayo. No? May alternative claim tayo para dun sa ating original claim. Na once na-re- na-reject yun, ng ating original claim, meron tayong backup. Ito yung, ito yung alternative hypothesis. Na, sa lungat, sinasabi ni null hypothesis. Okay? So, ngayon, if the null hypothesis is accepted, then the alternative hypothesis is rejected. So, to fully understand class, to fully understand how to identify the null and alternative hypothesis, so we have here the uh, kind of test here in hypothesis testing, we have one-tailed test and two-tailed test. So makikita nyo dyan, dyan sa, dalaw, uh, dyan sa gawing kanan, yung dalawang column na yan. Under the one-tailed test, meron tayong dalawa. And right-tailed, tsaka left-tailed. Doon naman sa left side, as you can see, we have two-tailed test. So again, class, HO, so yan yung ating null hypothesis. HA, alternative hypothesis. So, dito class, uh, mapa one-tailed or two-tailed class, mapapansin nyo, meron tayong uh, symbol na equal. Ginamita natin ang equal. Doon sa dalawang variable. Okay? So, sa assumption natin, dyan sa, dyan sa, yan sa unang assumption natin, yung null hypothesis, y- yan yung original claim, which is no significant difference pagdating sa population mean at saka sample mean. No significant difference. Okay? So, pwede class, pwede rin, tayo, pwede rin naman tayo magkaroon ng greater than or equal symbol. Basta merong equal pa rin, no? Or less than or equal symbol. Diyan sa null. Okay? So, pwede mu is greater than or equal to k. Mu is less than or equal to k. Pero hindi pa rin nawala yung, yung symbol na equal. Okay? Dito naman class, kung gusto natin i-prove na that there is a significant difference between population mean and sample mean, so dito papasok si alternative hypothesis. Okay? So sa, sa two-tailed test, ang ginamit natin symbol, okay, not equal. Sa right-tailed, greater than, yung mu greater than k. Sa left-tailed, yung sample mean is greater than dun sa population mean. Okay, so dito class, pinapakita na yung one-tailed test is directional. Mapansin nyo, doon sa alternative, gumamit tayo ng greater than symbol at less than symbol, di ba? Okay. So, malamang sa malamang, sa problem, may binabanggit or ma- may mababasa kayo doon ay nakikita kayong keyword katulad na ng greater than, Less than, more than, okay? Babasahin nyo yung problem, may hit na nakikita nyo or marinig nyo or makita nyo yung mga ganung words. So, automatic directional to. And it is one thing. It is one thing. Depende na lang kung right or left. Pero class, kung wala naman nabanggit na katulad ng ganun, okay, katulad ng greater than or less than, blah, 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 Okay, so that, that is non-directional. So dito papasok si, si two-tailed test. Again, kapag may nabanggit sa problem, kapag may nabanggit sa problem na katulad na more than, less than, greater than, 
uh, better than, kahit better than, pwede yun. That is one tail test. No? So, depende kung right tail or left tail. Kapag wala naman, two tail test. Sir, bakit po kailangan ng one tail test at saka two tail test kapag nag-hypothesis testing tayo? So, dito natin mayalaman yung mga critical values okay, na gagamitin natin depende dun sa uh, kiniklaim natin. No? Para alam natin kung i-accept pa natin or i -re reject yung null hypothesis. So, dito, example natin, meron tayong uh, hypothesis dito. No? So, determine lang natin yung determine na natin yung non null and alternative hypothesis. So, number one, the lecturer claims that his students scored an average of 55 marks. Is this directional or non-directional? So, this is non-directional and this is, uh, we're going to use the test, is two-tailed test. Okay? So, ito, two-tailed test. So, HO, mu, is equal to 55. And dun sa ating alternative hypothesis, mu is not it's not equal to 55. Okay? Again, kapag non-directional, that is two-tailed test. Okay? So, we're going to use null, uh, not equal symbol para dun sa ating alternative hypothesis. Okay? So, this is two-tailed test. Dabagay nyo lang two-tailed test. So, number two, the mean selling price of all cars manufactured exceed 80,000 pesos. So, para sa ating null hypothesis, Mu is equal to 80,000. HA, or alternative hypothesis, uh, mu is what? Is greater than 80,000 pesos. So this is a one-tailed test right. Or right-tailed test na lang. Okay, right-tailed. Number three, the mean amount of juice drink in a labeled 1.5 liter labeled bottle is not more than 1.49 liters. So, dahil dun sa keyword natin na not more than 1.49. Okay? So, 1.49 is the maximum na. So, we're going to use the less than symbol for our alternative hypothesis. So, sa so null hypothesis, mu is equal to 1.49 liters. While the HA is mu is less than 1.49. So, this is one tail left or left tail test na lang, no? Okay? So, those are uh, examples of how to determine the null and alternative hypothesis. Okay, so now, proceed tayo class sa uh, hypothesis testing. So, number one, in hypothesis testing, we have five steps. Number one, determine the level, uh, sorry, determine the null and alternative hypothesis. Number two, determine the level of significance and critical value or values of Z or T. Bakit critical value or values? Pwede tayo magkaroon ng isang critical value, pwede rin tayo magkaroon ng dalawang critical value para sa Z and T. Alright. So, yung level of significance, ano nga ba yung level of significance? So, para sa level of significance, so level of significance or significance level, it is denoted by alpha. It is a probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. So, when we say significance level or it is denoted by alpha. So, kadalasan plus na binibigay ito sa problem. So, for example, uh, test the claim uh, at level of significance 0 0.10. So, for example, 0 0.10. 0 0.10 or 10% is the probability or chance na pwedeng ma-reject ang inyong null hypothesis. Dahil dyan sa significance level na yan. And also, we have what we call the rejection region. Okay? So, kung naalala nyo, class, yung ating normal curve, kapag ibinibigay yung significance level, usually, makikita natin yung sa problem. Sabi doon, uh, test the claim at 0 0.01, test the claim at 0 0.05. So, yun yung mga probability, which is also area na makikita natin sa normal distribution. Yun yung din, uh, Rejection region is the is the region at far end of the distribution. It, it is also known as critical region and denoted by alpha. Yung rejection region na may kita natin sa normal curve, yun lang yung uh, naka-shade. No? Naka Where yung shaded na yung area na yun, area na yun, yung area na yun or yung probability na yun, yun yung significance level natin. Okay? So for example, dito class, 
uh, example to ng ano no na one tail no one tail right okay so example yan for example binanggit sa problem na uh, test the claim at uh, uh, level of significance of 0.10 meaning to say that 10, 10, we have 10% probability or 10% chance na pwedeng ma-reject ang ating null hypothesis kung 10% yung uh, chance na pwedeng ma-reject yung ating 90 uh, yung ating null hypothesis we have 90% naman na con- yung tinatawag uh, natin confidence level na na true yung ating null hypothesis. True or valid yung ating null hypothesis. Yun naman yung tinatawag natin confidence level. 90% confidence level. So, complement sila pagdating sa 100%. No? Complement sila sa 100%. So, for example, dito class, uh, one-tailed right, usually class, kapag one-tailed right, ang ating rejection region ay makikita sa kanan ng ating normal distribution. Okay? Ito yung ating rejection region na tinatawag nasa kanan, no? And dun sa kabila naman, ito, yung hindi naka, ano, walang shade, ito yung tinatawag natin acceptance region. Okay? Ano nga ba yung i-accept? Ano ba yung i-reject? Yung null hypothesis. Okay? So, dito. Dito, class, yung line, yung vertical line na pumapagitan dun sa, ano, pumabakit na dun sa ating acceptance region, at saka rejection region, ito yung tinatawag natin critical value, no? So, uh, depende kasi class sa ibini- ibibigay natin na ibibigay na what do you call this? Ibibigay na level of significance depende kung saan mal- malolocate ng ating critical value. Okay? Or depende kung ano yung magiging uh, critical value natin. Kung saan siya nakalocate. Okay? Depende sa level of significance. Okay, ibinigay yung 0.10 na level of significance, meaning to say, ito yung 0.10 or 10% na area ng ating normal curve dyan sa gawing kanan na yan. Okay, kung saan pwedeng ma-reject ang ating null hypothesis. At dito naman, pwede uh, ma-accept yung ating null hypothesis. So, kailan ba, uh, kailan ba, sir, malalaman kung rejected or accepted nga ba ang HO? So, meron tayong tinatawag class na computed value for Z or for T. Okay, gamit yung formula, gamit yung formula ng Z test at saka T test. Okay? Ang gagawin kasi natin class is, i-compare iku- natin yung nakuha nating value doon sa computed value versus doon sa ating critical value. Okay? So, for example, this one. For example, class, uh, ibinigay yung level of significance, uh, let's say, 10% level of significance. So, for example lang to, ha? Ang naging critical value natin is 1.906. Ito yung critical value natin, 1.906. For example, lumabas dun sa ating computed value is 1.5. So, we know that 1.5 is less than 1.906. Kaya, nasa kaliwa si... Si 1.5, ni 1.906. Nasa kaliwa, si 1.5. Ni 1.906. So, syempre, si 1.5, dito siya ma-fall sa acceptance region. Okay? So, meaning to say, we are going to accept the null hypothesis. So, ibig sabihin, class, there is no significant difference doon sa dalawang variable natin, yung population mean and sample mean. Okay? Ngayon naman, class, kapag na-compute nyo naman, uh, gamit yung Z-test or T-test formula, kapag ang na-compute nyo naman ay greater than 1.906, let's say 2.5 ang lumabas sa computed value. We know that 2.5 is greater than 1.906. Okay? Tama ba? So, kaya malolocate natin si 2.5 dun sa kanan ni 1.906. So, dito siya mapapol sa ating rejection region. Meaning to say, kapag 2.5 binakuha natin sagot, we need to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? So, syempre, kapag nireject yung si null hypothesis, ia accept nyo si si backup, si alternative 
hypothesis. All right. So that that is for one till right. Same thing din naman kung meron tayong one till left. Okay? So kapag one till left naman class, mapapansin niyo diyan ang ating rejection region ay nasa kaliwa naman ng ating normal curve. Ng ating curve 'yan. Then yung acceptance region nasa kanan naman. Okay? So syempre, meron din tayong tinatawag na critical value. Okay. Same lang din kay same lang din no kung kailan natin i-accept or kung kailan natin i-reject. Pero magkaiba naman to sa right. I-reject naman natin kung less than naman, kung less than naman yung computed value compared doon sa critical value. So syempre kapag less than dito siya mapo-fall sa rejection region. Okay? Kapag greater than naman yung computed value doon sa critical value, take note of this, this is one tail left. Okay? So, magkakaiba yun ha. Nakasabihin nyo, same lang ito doon sa, sa right. Kapag uh, greater than naman yung ating computed value, compare doon sa ating critical value, so we, need, we need to accept the, we should accept the null hypothesis. And also, we have two tail. Okay, two-tailed tayo. So, sa two-tailed class, uh, meron tayong dalawang rejection region. Okay? From the word itself, two-tailed. So, dun sa ating normal curve, dulo sa dulo, meron tayong dalawang rejection region. Diyan. Also, syempre, kung meron tayong dalawang rejection region, meron din tayong dalawang critical values. So, negative critical values and positive critical values. So, dalawa. Positive, negative, critical values. Symmetric naman kasi yan, dalawang yan. Okay? So, for example, uh, binigay sa problem na uh, itetest natin yung claim at 0.10 uh, or 10% level of significance. Kapag two-tailed class, yung 0.10, hahatiin natin sa dalawa. I-divide natin by 2. Meaning to say, kaliwat kanan, Kaliwat ka na meron tayong tig 0.05. 0.05. Okay? Na level of significance. Kabilaan niya. For a total of 10%. So, ginawa natin, hinati natin yung 0.10 sa dalawa. Kabilaan, meron tayong rejection region. Na 0.05. Okay? And then, plus, meron tayong acceptance region. Yung walang shade na yan na nasa pagitan ng ating negative and positive critical values. So again, oh, same idea doon sa left and right tail. Kapag yung ating computed value ay greater than dito sa positive critical value, we need to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? And if the computed value is less than the negative critical value, negative critical value, then also we need to reject the null hypothesis. But if the computed value is in between, between the negative, uh, negative and positive critical values, so dito siya mapapal sa ating acceptance region. So kailangan i-accept natin yung Null hypothesis. So, yun yung concept ng ating level of significance at rejection region. Okay?